Welcome back, everybody. This is going to be our Algebra 2 Linear Functions Lesson Number 6, well, Linear Piecewise Functions Homework Review Part 2, and where we're going to start with question number 2 here. And so in this question, it says, determine the range of the function g of x graphically. Now, to find this graphically, what we have to do is going to find the um, endpoints but evaluate the, evaluate the function as endpoints. So we see in this case that our domain for the first part, uh, first piece of our linear function, of our function, which is a linear function, is going to be between the domain of x values of negative 2 to positive 2. So what we want to do is we want to find, in this case, f of neg 2 and then f of positive 2. And this is a linear function. We know that we can plot those points and then connect this, the segment. So here, we're going to have, because it belongs to the x plus 4, we'll do negative 2 plus 4. And that gives us 2. Our coordinate, it will be negative 2, comma 2. Okay. And then we plug in 2 to x plus 4. We have 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. And therefore, we have, in this case, the coordinate 2, comma 6. Now we're going to graph this, okay? So we're going to graph this. And so x equals negative 2 on the x-axis go left 1, 2, and up 2. So this will be our first piece right here. And that will be negative 2, comma 2. Our next coordinate for this function will be 2, comma 6. So we go from the origin to the right 2, 1, 2, and then up 6, 1, 2, 3, four, five, six. Okay, and so what we'll do from here is we're going to connect these two points with a line segment. And we see in this case, this is what we get for the first part. Okay. So, we just kind of plot these. Let's make sure I get this correct. It's off by a little bit, but I do want to make sure we're good. There you go. But oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's good. All right. So I do want to make sure that we get this correct. No. Uh, so um, we're doing this very carefully. Now, the second part of the function deals with, uh, in this case, 1 half x plus 9. That's our rule, but only for values of x greater than 2. And in this case, going to be less than equal to 6. So now I'm going to separate this a little bit. Because now, when I find, I'm going to actually find f of 2. But here with f of 2, this these two are closed, closed dots because they included the endpoint. This one's going to be an open dot, though, because the whole symbol here, x is greater than 2, but not equal to. So we will have an open dot for this endpoint. So now if we plug in 2, we have 1 half times 2 plus 9. And that means you have 1 plus 9 is equal to 10. So we'll have the coordinate here, 2 comma 10. But again, that'll be an open circle, open. All right. And now... The other endpoint will be, in this case, 6. So we want to find f of 6. And f of 6 is 1 half times 6 plus 9, which is 3 plus 9, or 12. So our other endpoint will be 6, 12. OK? I hope I have no dots there. OK, so let's take a look. Well, we have in this coordinate uh, 2 comma 10, 2 comma 10. Well, let's see now. 2 comma 10 will be over here, but it'll be an open circle. So open circle at 2 comma 10, because I think that's 10. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, the next segment is going to be a little bit off screen. So here we go. 3, 4, 5, 6. This is 10, 11, 12, somewhere over here. OK. And we'll connect the line segment. OK. 
Now, because off the grid, I'm going to kind of label these coordinates. So I'm going to type them in for us. All right, maybe use a little smaller font. Okay, 16 font. And so this quarter here was neg 2, 2. Neg 2, 2. Okay, so this coordinate here was going to be 2 comma 6 this open coordinate is going to be 2 comma 10 that'd be the open coordinate and then we would have in this case the coordinate close coordinate uh, that'd be 6 comma 6 comma 12. Again, I want to come in this case for this coordinate. This going to be closed. So now they determine the range of the function graphically. Well, the range, it looks like it's going to be y, y values. We're going to have y values here again, starting from, from positive 2 to positive 6 inclusive. Okay? But then the range values appear to start from, but to be greater than, but not equal to 10, and up to 12. Now, our range has to do with the possible y values. And so we would say in this case, the range of g of x, let me make sure I use a little larger font for this one. Okay. The range of g of x will be, in this case, 2 is less than or equal to, I'll put parentheses around this because it could, be, it could be two things here, 2 is less than or equal to, it's less than or equal to, y is less than or equal to 6, okay, oops, less than or equal to 6, okay? And then the second comment, the second part, all right? And we got a little comma here. This, in this case, we're going to get definitely 10, but 10 is not going to equal to y. 10 instead would be, would be just less than y is less than or equal to 12. And I'll move this down a little bit so you guys can see. Okay. That's our range. All right, let's make this full page. You guys can take a look at everything here. So we had to graph this to be able to figure our range. Again, what possible y values? We have a gap between 6 and 10, meaning it includes y equals 6. But then there's a big gap missing for all the y values between between six and to, to up to ten. And ten, of course, is not part of our part of our range. It's not that y value is not part of our, our choices to fill because it's an open dot there. Okay. And so this will be the range range of g of x. Okay. Well, now another way is to write interval notation. And so interval notation will look like a little. Oops. I used use in this case a different color. Maybe blue. Okay, inclusive of 2 to 6. All right, and then soft bracket, or in this case, parenthesis, looks like this. It means we don't include 10, but we do include 12 with a little squared of our, or, or a hard bracket. And that will be the range of the function g of x. Okay, another way to do this is called in, uh, interval notation. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the end of question number two, which is part two, because, man, this took a quite a long time. These questions are pretty intense. All right? Hope this has been helpful to you guys. I, I should have next time maybe calculate and see whether or not my, my coordinates will be on the grid. I can make adjustments to the grid and also. All right? So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful. Please give it a like if you found it helpful and all. Leave comments or questions in the comment section below. That definitely helps the channel out. And of course, if you had not subscribed yet, please subscribe. All right. And turn notifications to find out when new videos are added to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue our, our study of Algebra 2. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video.
Okay, take care and be safe.